Lord some praise. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. A lot of time. Amen. 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 Welcome you here tonight to Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. <coughs> where the word of God makes you and I a promise. Blessed are they that come on and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. filled. So we pray that you came with your cup turned up, ready to get it filled up. Amen. 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 It's great to see each one of you back. Welcome back from your vacation. Amen. We pray you had a great time. So we want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. If you've got prayer requests, we'd like to lift those up before the Lord. Yes. You tell me what they are. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> My granddaughter. Uh, Samantha got married. Well, what is it? Saturday. Saturday. Sunday. And they went to Mexico for the honeymoon. So they would well, be traveling back sometime. Tomorrow. For them and Danny and me. Yeah. Little woman here. You said two right ladies. <laughs> 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 Remember my dad and, and mom, but my dad's getting really serious. He's getting so what? It's really serious. Um, Still dealing with his hearing or something different? It's it's different. Different. Back with his heart issue stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep you in prayer. Lord knows. You feel like playing tonight? Okay. <clears throat> Lift up Bonnie as she continues to heal, get better. Also, we had a, a cousin pass away this last weekend, uh, Kevin Frazier. Um, I'm dealing with some arthritis in my right hand a little bit, so I can get through that. I talked to uh, my sister Ellen today, and um, she sounded okay, but she still, she got a, the report that she told us that she had gotten wasn't complete. She she is not her back is in bad shape, but it's not going to <coughs> rumble like she said it was. Mm -hmm. Um she's um but she her back she does have a lot of back issues, she had spinal stenosis and she has a lot of discs. That, um, you got that degenerative degenerative disc, disc, yeah, disc disease, mm -hmm. whatever. And she still she does have the um the infection that it spread to her her shoulder. She's doing okay. She um the doctor wants her to walk. And that's a little struggle. Get out of that bed. That's the only way you gotta force yourself. That's good. That's good. Sometimes we don't want to hear what the do what the doctor says, but when he says get out of the bed, then get out of the bed. Okay. So yeah, it's good. Uh, it's a man I work with. He's going to get a knee replacement tomorrow. His name's Jeff. We, he came to visit Ron my first or second time preaching. Uh, he's going to have a knee replacement tomorrow. Not too long ago, he had a hip replacement that went pretty good. He is up and walking to. The same day, he's hoping that this knee replacement to go the same way. Uh, keep Daniel in your prayers. He's got his cast off, and he's just got like a a soft brace on, and uh, waiting on more reports for his uh, knee issues on the opposite knee. Uh, so keeping him in prayer and his family, uh, Cherise and Kelsey. I like to say their names. I don't always say their names, but I want to let the speak their names out. I've got loved ones too that are, are lost and stand in need of prayer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Irene's traveling. Yeah, and I'm in the middle of my family being tested, so they all seem to sick. Uh, keep me in your prayers too. Been a busy week this week at work and. Uh, I like to have it busy, but not so busy I can't meditate. 
You know, I like to be able to, you know, meditate and not just have my thoughts strictly on electrical or strictly on what I'm doing. You know what I mean. I'd like to have a little bit of time, but this week, uh, been been a little real busy, and uh, so it sort of robbed me of your meditation. You know, you know how important that is. Your meditation between you and the Lord, so that's, you make sure you get that time in. If you can't get it while you're working, you gotta get other times, right? Anyone else? Way back comes. Let's keep the ones in prayer that uh, Miss Doris and uh, Barbara, others that are or normally try to get here on on tonight. And Junior, I'm not sure. Uh, I hadn't talked with him to see why he's not here, but let's keep him in prayer. Willie and and Sylvia, uh, keeping them in prayer. Our normal Wednesday night crowd, keeping all them lifted up. We pray that others, which is almost the whole church is here anyway. But uh, but uh, but he, he, the others though, let's let's pray that the the church will grow, and uh, and then it'll come with time, amen. amen. So if we can uh, go to the Lord and pray on that, Brother Greg, if he'll take these petitions for us to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be back in your house, Lord. We're glad to be here. We're happy. We've been blessed today, being able to have another beautiful day that you've given us. To allow us to be able to do the work that you provide. Lord, we thank you for just being able to come to you in prayer, to be able to lift up others in need. Yes. Lord, there's so many in the world that is in need right now. Yes. We lift up those in the church that are sick and ailing. Yes. Lord, we lift up <coughs> bodies with the eyes and Millie back, Eugene breathing in back, and just about everybody in here has got some kind of ailments it seems like lord and we know that sometimes that's just life we have to put up with it and lord we understand we, we just ask that you just give us an extra blessing lord yes, if nothing else put an extra extra step in our stride lord yes. and give us the strength to make it through another day yes. when times get hard lord we lift up those that will be traveling and those that are coming back from vacations and honeymoons and all that lord yes. we we know that Traveling down the road sometimes today can be just as dangerous as uh, standing in the street, Lord. And we just think that anything can happen, and we just know that you're watching after each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we just lift up the lost, those that we've mentioned, and those that we have on our mind, Lord. You know that we know where we'll go if something happens to us. We know where we'll spend eternity, but if our thoughts go on the ones that does not know toward those that are still lost and we just lift those up Lord, we want to lift up our country yes, we want to lift up israel as well lord <laughs> and all the tragedies that's bestowed on their country and we also need to lift up the palestinians because i think that they're going to be on the receiving end lord of something bad as well so we lift them up as well and lord if we know that you will hold everyone accountable that's that needs to be held account accountable on Judgment Day, Lord. Yes, yes. So just be with everything that's going on there and bring us through to the other side. Yes. And we ask you to just bless this meeting, Lord. Bless this uh, uplifting of your word tonight. Yes. Just bring bring it to our hearts and be with us and guide us through this service. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And that's true. That's great. Uh, things that we're thankful and, and blessed to be in the in our country that we the way things are even as bad as it as it seems here it could be worse amen, amen. if you don't open up your hymn book if you would i'd like to go to page 329 <laughs> Thank you. 
blessing from the Lord. Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, tonight to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. We'll look at verse, start at verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression, excuse me, transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might are called, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also be the necessity, be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool 
and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the reading and hearing of your word. We ask you, Father, that tonight we pause to be thankful as we, as we think about how you have shed your blood for us. And we thank you and we praise the name of Jesus tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As you can tell, i got blood on my mind. <laughs> Amen. As that, uh, you know, we, we think about blood sometimes and we, we think how nasty it was. In fact, Sunday when Millie had come in here with a, a cut finger and uh, just wrapped in a paper towel, she wouldn't stop bleeding. And, uh, you know, after taking eloquence, all of us are, are concerned, you know, she might need to go to the doctor, you know. So, but, but we're thankful tonight she don't have a stitch in it and, she, and it's not bleeding. But I wanted to share something with you that blood has so much importance in our life. In fact, if you didn't have any blood, you wouldn't have life. For life is in the blood. The blood, in fact, has something to do with your sugar, right? The blood has something to do with your oxygen level. I mean, blood has so many sources of health and it can also carry unhealthy things. Amen. I'm reminded as I think about blood as the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years. You know, and so she comes and she touches the hem of Jesus' garment. Because she had already spent all of her money that she had to doctors. Doctors couldn't help her. Have you ever felt like that? Why well, go to the doctor? They can't help me. You know. Sometimes you say, well, I need a second opinion. Yeah. And you ought to get a second opinion. When they give you bad news, you say, well, thank you, doctor. I'm, let's get a follow-up. You know? <coughs> and you can. You bring, to, bring those things to the Lord in prayer. But we think about blood. And so this woman that had the issue of blood came before the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, actually, behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And he said, who touched me? His all his apostles are saying, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's pressing up against you. Everybody's touching you. He said, somebody touched me with faith. And see, there's something about our faith that's got to take part when we think about the blood of Jesus Christ. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Romans chapter 3. And let me let me back up. I don't like to start where there's a. I'm actually going to have to start at verse 21. It looks like because I don't want to start at the end of a semicolon. Uh, that's like starting halfway through a sentence. So I like I like to start where the where the subject begins. And it's but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest without or excuse me manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, whom all and all, excuse me, all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then our verse 25, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation of through faith in his blood, to declare the righteousness for the remission of sins that, that are past through the forbearance of God. Now, as we stop there, we think about faith in his blood because there's something that we, we talk about faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? And we think about how God, how in the Old Testament, why did there even have to be the shedding of blood? Why did... Why was it so important to God about bloodshed? In fact, when we think of the first offerings offered to God, one offering was of vegetables of the garden and another was of blood. And the only one that God wanted to accept was that, that which was of blood. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
And that was that sort of when we think of that blood had had life content. Something had to give its life for this blood. Now in the book of Exodus, I'm not going to make you turn there because you know the story of the Passover. But in Exodus chapter 12, just for your knowledge, there had to be a sacrifice. The God said, I want you to take a lamb without spot or blemish in the first year of its life. And I want you to slaughter this lamb. And if, if you got too small a family, a couple of you joined together. Amen. And on this blood, he wanted you to take and apply the blood to the tor two doorposts and over the, the overhead. Amen. And this almost makes me think of when I thought about it this afternoon was like an umbrella. It sort of covered the top and the sides. You was completely covered if you stood, up, stood in this doorway. And that even brings you even more. As you stand in the doorway and you're covered by the blood, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he also says, I am the door. Amen. Amen. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you could look at that in the Old Testament and see how it could be prophecy toward the New Testament as Jesus sort of brings all this up to remembrance about the blood and about the, the door, that we could see how, how when you look now that we've got the New Testament, we could look at the Old Testament and see Jesus. Amen? We could see these things. But there had to be faith in the blood. So what I was getting ready to say, could God have just said, Whoever just calls on, on Jesus can be saved. Yeah. Could it have been that all you had to do is believe in Jesus and, and you'd be saved without Jesus giving his life? So we, we've got to sort of look at all more than one verse of Scripture because we know that God could do whatever he wanted to because he's God. But through God's own law, the only way to have forgiveness of sin or repentance of remission of sin is by the shedding of blood. And he started it in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Amen? And God's not going to contradict himself. And God's not going to change. But he laid a foundation in the Old Testament to say, hey, but all these other sacrifices, that had to be done more than once. Amen? They had to continually have these sacrifices for sin. But whenever we get to the New Testament, God said, now I'm going to show you the way it can be done once and for all. And that's when Jesus gave his life. And he shed his blood, which was the Lamb of God. Amen? The, without spot or blemish, not because he sinned or he deserved to die. But, be, but he, because he took upon our sin. Amen? That he took our sin that because of our sin, he gave his blood. The Bible teaches us that in Romans chapter 5, flip over there if you would, 5, I'm going to read verse 8 and 9. It says, but God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we're saved from judgment because of Jesus Christ by having faith in his blood. Amen. Now, we have faith in Jesus, but we got to understand that it's because of that, his blood. You know, oftentimes we look at uh, a picture of Jesus here on the wall with the thorn, uh, the thorn of uh, the crown of thorns on his head. Or if we see him uh, hanging on the cross crucified. Amen. And we, we see the, the pretty picture because it's not all bloody. But whenever you remember the story, whenever they said, this is the man. Because he had been beaten and, and so bruised and, and cut up that he no longer looked like the man. He, you couldn't recognize him. I seen one and one picture depiction that uh, and he was beaten with something. You've probably seen it on Facebook if you're a Facebook person. That he was had lashes <coughs> all over him, and then his back you could actually see the the ribs. Amen. Now, I don't know what Jesus actually looked like because I wasn't there. Amen. But I imagine for him to take the strike for the whole world, to pay the penalty for everyone's sin that had been, that was, and that will ever be, that he took a beating. Amen. He took a beating that was beyond what you and I could ever imagine or, or would ever think of going through. We can't even imagine what, what was going on 
And we, we think of this as that what some of their mentality was whenever they wanted to let Jesus go, but some said they should kill him, you know, crucify him. They wasn't satisfied. Why? Just because someone called themselves God? Amen? Just because he, uh, he, he, he tried to do good for people? It was all, everybody was doing good when he gave them a good report. When he's doing something for them. But as soon as he sort of turned over their, got in their pocketbooks, I'll say it like that. You know, it's almost like whenever he came to the, the, the church and they was trying to sell all the things and, and he says, uh, you know, he's turning the tables over. He says, you know, you turned my house, God's house that was supposed to be a house of prayer into a, a den of thieves. You know, you're you're just wanting the my, my words, you're just wanting the money for yourself. God doesn't use the money. Amen. If you think about it, here at the church, what does God use our money for? He uses it for us, right? Yes, yes. So we can have the comfort. We can look at have, have a nice place to worship. Can we, can we worship God or could we worship God just as easy and just as full under a tree or under the arbor that we have over here? We could put just as much effort and just as much praise and worship. But God wanted us to have a place of worship that we liked. We beautify. We have a beautiful place. Uh, but God, in, when you look at the Old Testament, he, wanted, he liked beauty. And he liked a certain standard, and it had to be a certain way. But we, we're looking at this. Uh, well, we're blessed. We Some of you come in cold. We could turn it up, but it's 66. You get up here hollering a little bit like me, you won't be cold. <laughs> Amen. But you come in, some of you was a little bit cold. And uh, Millie, you can go and put your arm around her again. Yeah, he, I guess uh, some oxygen on the There you go. Here so, up. <laughs> So, so we can come in, but we got we've got heat, we've got uh, air conditioning. Whenever it's uh, hot outside, we've got lights. So many luxuries that we have. And you think about this time in uh, they didn't have lights, running water, uh, in this time. Amen. Here in the biblical days. So you look at this and how how did they manage? Well, they would have managed just fine. So you're looking at. So what is God using the money for? So Jesus said it's not about the money. It's not about how much money your, your, your church has in the bank. Amen? But we want to start and get back to the subject of faith in his blood because there's something that you've got to realize that the only reason that God came in the flesh was to share, shed the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Amen? Was to shed blood. That's the only reason God came in the flesh. Amen. He could have come because they was looking for God to come, right? They was looking for the Messiah. They was looking for him to come as a king uh, in all of his glory. Mm -hmm. And behold, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Instead, what they got was a humble carpenter to come in sharing good news, doing good things. But telling you like it is all at the same time. Talking in parables that if you, you know, you sometimes wonder. Uh, Greg, sometimes when he teaches, he'll talk in parables. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I'll, I'll talk in parables. And we'll use these uh, earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And some of us, it goes, phew, goes just like that, you know. And uh, some, sometimes people get it, you know, and then as soon as you get it, say, ah, oh, I got it. But you, could you imagine Jesus' time whenever he's talking about uh, in his parables? And he gets to this part, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. You know, that would be like, I'm not a cannibal. You know, how am I going to eat you? How am I going to drink your blood? That's the Bible says we're not supposed to drink blood. You know, we're not supposed to, to eat blood and stuff. You know, we think about the Sunday school lesson Sunday. It was talking about eating the word of God. 
And so Jesus speaking in a parable, he wasn't taught literally eating him, but he is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So basically you're consuming him spiritually. Amen. And you're accepting his body as a, as a bodily sacrifice. And the stripes, in fact, I like the way Peter says it. He says that by his stripes you were healed. I mean, you've already been healed. By stripes. And we look at this and we ought to say, yeah, but I've got health issues. I believe in Jesus Christ, but I have health issues. We talked about it tonight. Our, body, our bodies get feeble. They start getting older. We get arthritis. and I, I heard a preacher say arthritis, or bursitis, and bunions. You know, <laughs> and then so we, we think of all these things that, that sort of attacks the body, and the body, body gets old. That's just what it does. Amen? Mm -hmm. And now God can give you grace. God can heal. Amen? But you know, even when we think I wanted to read something out of the book of Ephesians, because when I had this verse, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. When I was thinking about Ephesians, and I was thinking about this, his blood, a little bit later in Ephesians chapter 2, it says that we're saved by grace. Amen? But in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The only reason we've got grace is because of his blood. Amen? So let's read this once again. In whom we have redemption, that means you've been paid for. You have, you've been rescued. You've been redeemed. It's like if you was a, we followed a chicken truck past the church this morning, right? I mean, this afternoon. Uh, somehow it got in front of us uh, as we was coming off of, uh, I forget exactly where they turned in front of us. They, but they came in front of us on Cumberland Mill Church Road. And I said, I bet they're going to Siler City. And we followed them all the way. Chicken truck. Uh, chicken truck. truck. Feathers going everywhere. Just my Right? <laughs> So the feathers going everywhere, little white chickens, little white chicken feathers everywhere. So we're following this chicken truck, but the redemption uh, of one of those chickens, if I went to the truck driver and I said, here's $10, let me get one of those chickens and make it a pet. Mm -hmm. You know, I would have redeemed, I would have saved that chicken's life mm -hmm. by giving that $10. Mm -hmm. I redeemed that chicken, I bought that chicken. Yeah. Amen. But Jesus, when he paid the price, he paid with his blood, with his life. But it wasn't just like going to the Red Cross and them drawing blood out. It was a torturous event. Amen? That you get to, he basically, you could say that he would have bled to die at death if he did, just didn't give up the ghost because he willingly gave his life. <clears throat> The, the, when they came and, and pressed the spear in his side, he had already died. He, they couldn't kill him. Even if he had just stood there, he could have, he could have hung on the cross forever. Okay. If that's what, what he would have wanted to do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he said, couldn't I have called ten legions of angels to come and deliver me? <clears throat> you know, do you remember the story? So we think God has all the power, but he willingly gave himself to be beaten and to shed his blood. I don't like to shed blood. You know, when we think of going to, to the Red Cross, how many of you donate blood? It got to the point uh, that I didn't mind. You know, when I was younger, Jeffrey does great. He used to get, have to do a lot more blood tests. When he was younger, and he, he was a trooper, he'd sit there as a kid, and they'd find a vein and they'd draw blood, right? Taking little tubes. But so me, that doesn't really matter uh, unless they have to poke the hole two times. <laughs> and boy, that burns, doesn't it? They, they, they get where they don't know, and some of you come out of there like I had before with bruises where they like, oh, then they turn and wiggle them around. So someone don't know what they're doing, that hurt. So you think about these Roman soldiers. They knew how to torture. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
They could have just done some little lacerations where Jesus would have bled. Uh, there's a song that Daniel sings about the hammer and nails uh, that I got it on the CD, but toward the, it's about this man. He's having a dream. Who's that? I, this is what I got out of, out of I heard the, at the, when I heard the song. Amen. That he was dreaming about this man hanging, being crucified. He said, what's this about the hammer and nails? And that by the end of the song, you can hear the, the hammer hitting nails, right? And you, you think about that. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever been pierced? I don't know if you've ever been impaled by anything. I know, I know we've stepped on nails. Many of us have stepped on nails. And you probably hit yourself with hammers. I know Roger has. Uh, he's hit himself with everything, it seems like. But, but we've hit our and carpenters. So you've hit yourself with things. But actually, uh, my brother actually shot a nail uh, in his knee with a nail gun before. But these aren't little... Little nails that that they were crucified with. These are spikes, like you're thinking, like railroad spikes. If I could imagine one uh, to to hang, the, and we often think of di different people have different visions of nail pierced hands, but they often show Jesus pierced in his wrist. Uh, maybe because this would tear through here, you is is going to hold. If you sort of feel, you can find that little bone there that sort of pierced in between. Yeah. And you, you think of that, just how different, <laughs> we don't even imagine it truly. Probably if you wanted to watch a movie, Passion of Christ would probably be the most realistic mm -hmm. of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. In fact, it was so realistic that one person had a heart attack back whenever it was made and they uh, by watching the film. And it wasn't even in English. You didn't even, I don't know if it's translated in English now, but whenever I watched it, you had to read it. It wasn't even, wasn't even in English. You got an English one now? So it wasn't even written in, or, or made in English uh, whenever I watched it. But it's, when we, we think about it, it's, we take so many things for granted. So what I wanted to, the purpose of the night, and I, me singing that song about I claim the blood, is that there's things that we've got to just continue to have faith in. When you're sitting out here and you've got diagnosed certain things and you're waiting to be healed, <clears throat> keep having your faith and you have your faith in the blood because it's by the your faith in the blood is what gets you through. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we have to be reminded of that from time to time. We, we focus, okay, I have faith in Jesus, but why... <laughs> What's, what what victory was Jesus without him shedding his blood? In fact, the scripture told us tonight, without the death of the testator, that's the one that gives the testament, without their death, then their testament is no good. There's no strength. There's no value in it. So the encouragement I want to share with you tonight is having faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so that means occasionally you're, Think outside the box and think about how precious that blood is. Maybe uh, I'm just reminded of the girl, the woman that had the alabaster box. <coughs> the, it was a, an anointing oil that a virgin would save for her wedding night for, for their honeymoon. A special fragrance of oil that was very costly. And I preached a sermon once before. Maybe I'll do it again. But I preached a sermon about uh, the value of your alabaster box or the value of your oil. What's your anointing cost to you? And so her her anointing in this in the message was her anointing was only because of the Lord, and, and the anointing and the cost and value of that is what she had broken open and anointed the feet of Jesus. And prepared him for his burial. Remember when they said, "What are you wasting all this oil for? This is costly. We could have sold it and got done all this other stuff." Again, thinking about money, even his own apostles, you know, 
So having faith and thinking, so getting back to the faith in, in his blood, pause once in a while and thank Jesus for his blood. I mention it often, the Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus to my doorpost. You know, when I'm leaving the house, Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus. You say, well, that don't mean anything. Some people, some people it may not mean anything, but it means something to me. And what you do in your own relationship with the Lord, see, you've got to develop I'm not going to say rituals. That's not what I'm trying to get to. Or, But it, you've got to get to your faith. What you believe in. And if you can find it in the Bible and apply something in your life to your home. To your prayer life. And when you see it works, don't go backwards. I mentioned this the other day. Go forward. Don't go backwards. If you pray three times a day, don't start praying one time a day. Amen. If you're praying three times a day and it's working, don't say, I wonder what happened if I just prayed one time a day. Well, it might be too late. You go start praying one time a day, then you're going to get the news. You wouldn't be getting the same news as you was getting if you was praying three times a day. What if Daniel would have just prayed one time a day after he was used to praying three times a day? <laughs> Those lions might have gobbled him up. Right? <coughs> If we'd had the three Hebrew boys that got thrown in the fire, if they had decided that they would worship another king instead of the Lord, how would they have ended up? Don't go backwards. Go forwards. Amen? Amen. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. But if you feel like you want prayer tonight, if you feel like uh, I was thankful Daniel thanked <clears throat> the church for someone, to, for uh, Junior standing in for him to be anointed, was that last Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Last Wednesday, he sent a message saying thank you. And uh, <clears throat> but anytime you need prayer, we everything I pray that my sermons are always about stirring up your faith to get you closer to the Lord. To, something about to, to think about, not just to make you feel good. Amen. <clears throat> I want you to feel good, but it's more important that your faith. Is, is strong enough so that on those days you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. On those days you feel like all hell is against you. And you feel like you just can't make it another day. Amen? Mm -hmm. What are you going to depend on? You got you to gotta know that God is there to get you through. And, and you're going to go through tough times. <clears throat> Amen? I pray that you don't have to. And we're here to pray each other through. But as long as we stay prayerful... Those tough times might not be as tough. Mm -hmm. Amen. As long as we stay faithful to the Lord, those times that if we're doing the best we can and we're praying the best we can and we're as faithful as we can and something bad comes our way, God's going to see us through. Amen. But if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing and something bad comes our way, it's like, could I have avoided this? The question always comes up, well, is it God's, was this God's plan? Well, chances are it wasn't God's plan if you chose that pathway. Amen? So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you again for the reading and hearing of your word. We thank you, Lord, for sharing the scripture you, you let us have tonight. Lord, to stop and pause and think about how precious your blood that you shed on Mount Calvary, that you, how you, so many artists have painted a pretty picture. But Lord, we can only imagine the, the true pain and agony you went through as you shed your blood. And we're thankful that you took on that pain and agony so that we wouldn't have to. You paid the penalty of our sin when we deserved the death and we deserved the, the pain and the punishment. You took that away from us so we wouldn't have to. So, Lord, here at our church, we wanted to pause tonight and tell you we're thankful. And we're thankful that as we trust in you, we have faith in you. We have faith in your blood. We have faith in the word of God. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, as we join ourselves together from time to time, that you help our faith increase. You'll continue to teach us and draw us closer to you. I pray, Lord, that you'll keep us as we go our separate ways tonight. 
that you'll give us safe travels. We pray again for those that couldn't be here. And we pray, uh, I'm thinking of, of J.D., I want you, Lord, to, to I pray that you touch his body. You know what he stands in need of more than we do. But, Lord, we pray that there's healing in all the ones under our umbrella, spiritually, physically, and financially. Yes. And, Lord, we pray, and I like to pray it in that order, Lord, that all come to know you as their personal Savior. And all are healthy. And Lord, that all their needs will be supplied as you have promised in the word of God. May you go with us and keep us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.